Morning. Let's do sports now on the AM show with me, Muftar Nabila Abdullah. On a Tuesday, President Ekufado commissioned the Botteman Sports Complex, one of the facilities that will be hosting the African Games 2023. About $145 million was committed to constructing that facility for about 29 sporting disciplines. However, only 10 of the sporting disciplines will be happening at Botteman, while the rest will be moved to the Legon Sports Stadium, Baba Yara, and Cape Coast Sports Stadium. My colleague, Victor Achuk Tomaklo, was there and comes through with this report. President Akufuado has commissioned the Boteman Sports Complex, the main game center for the Accra 2023 African Games. The 145 million US dollar facility has inner routes, a football field, an eight lane athletics track, a 10 lane swimming pool for competitions, and an extra 10 lane warm up pool. The facility also has a 1,000-seater dome for indoor games, basketball, badminton, five separate courts for tennis and volleyball courts. Speaking at the event, President Akufuado said the facility was proof of his government's commitment towards sports development. However, we demonstrated commitment and resilience. And when all hope appeared lost, we came up with a brilliant idea of adopting a hybrid approach to hosting the game. That is, using facilities at the University of Ghana, which were under construction, as well as selected facilities we could develop on time here in Bortema. Our, our decision to adopt the hybrid method has proven to be a wise one, as facilities both at the University of Ghana and here in Bortima are ready for the hosting of the 13th edition of the Africa Games. Meanwhile, Sports Minister Mustafa Yusif expressed optimism that the Games will be a catalyst for sports development in Ghana. The forthcoming 13th African Games carries immense significance for our national development and beyond. The trail of the competition, the event serves as a catalyst for progress growth and development, and the construction of the state-of-the-art facilities in the country not only provide a platform for athletes' excellence, but also contribute to the overall infrastructure development, leaving a legacy for generations to come. After Accra 2023, the facility will serve as a center of excellence, nurturing, burdening talent, and providing platform for international competitions. This infrastructure, infrastructural investment also aligned with government's long-term vision of transforming the entire infrastructure here at Botima to a university for sports for development. So here is the much talked about aquatic center. It has a 10-lane competitions pool and another 10 for warm-ups. You've seen how good it looks, but purely from the athlete's perspective, just how good is this facility? 14-year-old Rina Ma Ajoko Ajiri, a swimmer in Ghana's national team, shares her experience. The level of water is very efficient and the way of the turning is very good. Like they have a nice push-off and the diving blocks, I like the fact that I can adjust it to any level I want because maybe some swimmers aren't comfortable at the level one, but I'm comfortable at the level three. So I'm, I like the fact that I'm able to adjust it to a good amount. And the lanes are very like they're equal and the line in the middle is very clear, the pool is very clear, so I can swim on the line. I know where I'm going and I can swim on the line. Yeah. Reina is one of Ghana's swimmers currently in the country. Of the 14 swimmers set to represent Ghana at the African Games, only two are in the country. The other 12 are expected to arrive in the country by the 25th of February. Daniel Opari, one of Ghana's coaches, says this will not be a problem. Well, some of them are in swimming camps out of the country. Um, they've got a swimming scholarship to go there and then study and train at the same time. So we know currently they are training. Uh, those are the investors who are with the investor teams over there. So they are all training and it's not really going to affect um, most of them. And you know, Currently, the World Championship is also ongoing at Doha, and some of them are also uh, representing us over there. So uh, we have three of the swimmers here yeah, at the World Championship. Yeah, so we have Abiku Jackson, we have um, Unilist uh, Techi, and then Christian Norte, who are currently in Doha representing Ghana for the World Championship. 
of Paris Confidence is shared by Ghana's chef de mission for the African Games, Ernest Danso. They've been using the best facilities that I can say. Cape Coast are the best facilities. I mean, they have attested themselves, the, the federation coaches and uh, uh, presidents who uh, actually visited the athletes in camp are so excited and, and happy about the facilities they're using. Uh, it might look delayed, but I feel we, we are ahead of many countries. I've, I speak to fellow facilities of a country. They haven't been to camp at all. Some of them are not even going to camp before, camp, maybe some few weeks or something before. So I think the players can uh, tell you anytime you speak to them that uh, they have the best time so far because they've never had this before in their lifetime. Ready or not, we will all find out when the games begin on March 8th. For Joy Sports, Victor Achutamaklo. That is my colleague, Victor Achutamaklo, there with the report from Bortemann following the commissioner of the facility by the president, Nana Ekufu Adu. And right by him was a minister of youth and sports. Reports we are picking up indicate that he's likely to be replaced by Jojo Rocky as a minister of youth and sports. However, there are concerns about regional balance when it comes to the people on cabinet because the gender minister is being removed from her position. So there's a possibility Mustafa Yusuf might stay at the Ministry of Youth and Sports, but there's also the likelihood that just as of last night, he is going to be replaced by um, Jojo Rocky. The president of the country, Nane Kufuado, is expected to fly out of Ghana later today. We understand that the confirmation would come either before he leaves or right after he leaves, then the confirmation of the reshuffling would happen. The interior minister is going to be replaced by the Greater Accra Regional Minister, Henry Corte. The finance minister is also being replaced by Dr. Uh, Mohammed Amin. Uh, but there are also concerns about that position, why the position is being handed to uh, Dr. Mohammed Amin. And then Okoboy will come in as a health minister in place of uh, the former um, uh, health minister. He has already informed his people that he's leaving the office. And his two deputies as well are also leaving. And then Fatimatu Abubakar is likely to replace Kojo Opon Kroma as the information minister. This is the position that was initially likely to be handed to Mustafa Yusuf. Kojo Opon Kroma was supposed to go to the Ministry of Youth and Sports. He's also likely to be moving to the Ministry of Works and Housing, whilst Asensu Boachi will be going to roads and highways. So the reshuffling, uh, that's what is likely to happen. Uh, and uh, we expect confirmations of those reshufflings by the close of day. Now, let's hear from President, uh, former President, uh, Joe Kufour. There is a football match being organized by his foundation to climax his 85th birthday celebrations. He says um, he's excited about the fact that his foundation has decided to choose his club, which is Kumasi Asante Kodoko, where he served as uh, chairman of the club somewhere in the 1980s to play a match against Intratroman FC. My old club, I was Kodoko chairman for about uh, three years before I became president. And then that time, Kosia Pia was captain and also captain at the same time the national team. Uh, Seattle wasn't, in those days, uh, quite a, a team. It wasn't known in Ghana as a team. But I, I, I'm happy that you made it so fast and you are going to com compete with my team. What's going to my team? I, you want to know, my wife comes from, or hail from, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and my wife's hometown, is a Dumasi, a real Dumasi, and Fiaka, which uh, are the next towns to your, the capital of it. So in a way, your club is coming from my wife's home, different, complete with my team. And so I, I feel caught between two sides that uh, I'm related to. Uh, I'll try not to be biased in favor of my team. And I would say, Sunday, let the better side win. Uh, but if you should draw, then I would ask the organizers to leave me this time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll decorate my homework with it. Um, then the scholars, I'm so proud of you. Um, so far, everywhere you've gone around the world, the reports come glowingly in praise of your efficiency and merit and all that. This is how to build an institution. 
especially style as scholars, who force scholars. The other thing I want to touch on is the fact that at long last, we are completing the mentoring center on the campus of the Premier University of Legon, uh, of Ghana, Legon. Uh, you know the land was given us by the university authorities. And uh, when we drive to campus, just take And later today, um, some sports journalists will be assembling at the Obra Sport at Circle as they demonstrate against the leadership of the Ghana Football Association, the Ministry of Youth and Sport, and by extension, government. They thank their demonstration as safe Ghana football because they believe that the current trajectory of the country's uh, most loved sport is on a downward spiral, and they want the uh, politicians to step out and save Ghana football. Let's hear from Songo, one of the organizers uh, who has been speaking about why they've chosen to take that uh, part of demonstrating on the streets of Accra. I mean, our, our, our leaders, I mean, they thought it wise in drawing the constitution. They were able to uh, allow a, a, a situation where you can demonstrate so you can exercise your constitutional right. You understand? And that is what we're going to do, a very peaceful demonstration where it's going to end very peaceful and, and I'm glad the end results very well. would, would be that Ghana will be the winner because we will take back our football. Very well. We'll bring now, the love back. Very well. I, I, you, you just mentioned uh, the, the fact that it's going to be a peaceful walk and of course that's what very we're professional known and noted for, uh, for. Now, tell me about the route and how things are going to be organized tomorrow. Yeah. Which route are we following? Yeah, the police uh, where, are. Where is, the, um, where is it starting for? Where's the starting point? Where's it ending? Which route is it following? As usual, the police will be there. Okay. The police will be there and the security agencies, mm. too, we've been able to contact one or two. Mm -hmm. You understand? We have some one or two military men mm -hmm. who are also going to be around. Mm -hmm. Very tight security because we don't want any problem. Mm -hmm. If you come and you misbehave, that is your cup of tea. If you are caught and you are being handed over to the police or, you know, whatever that happens to you, don't come and say, hey, fireman, come and help me, come and do this. Because I've not asked you to come. If you think you don't share the same common idea, if you don't see that our football is, is, is going so down, then please. If, but if you want to come, it's just a peaceful walk to make sure that our football gets back to where it has to be. We're starting from a brass spot, mm -hmm. circle. Very well. A brass spot. Then we'll move straight up to, um, that is the Independence Square. That will be our last point. Where we'll petition the president, we'll petition the sports ministry, the FA, then also the parliament. Mm -hmm. Have you put all these arms of, uh, of, uh, of our government? Yes, we've served them notice. You've served them we've notice. Served them notice. They're very professional. We're right. not just waking up to just go on the street and demonstrate and do anything now. We have to seek for mm. permits. We, we were able to get the permit. Very well. And everything is in line for tomorrow. We're hoping everybody, well. all uh, Ghanaians, everyone, each and everyone will be part of it because it's blasters and our football. Mm. It's gone so down. We need to make sure our football is back on track you understand everybody's angry everybody is sick people are worried people are just not happy because you just look Cote d'Ivoire Ivory Coast is just I mean it's just a border close to Ghana where it, the final should have been blasters and Cote d'Ivoire shouldn't have been Nigeria and Cote oh yes Very well. you understand but we know them we are just close yeah. They, they live like us. It's just that they are speaking French mm. and we are speaking the English. You understand? But it didn't happen that way, but I believe it's going to be a successful demonstration tomorrow. Thank you very Songo, much. Songo, thank you so, so much. It's been good having you here in the studio. Uh, let, me, Patrick. let me show you my siren before I leave. <laughs> mm, I have to... And so that if I want be... to talk... Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Emran Adru. Obia Amra or Brasport at 9 a.m. Sharp demonstration. Save Ghana football. Peaceful one. More fire. 
That's your sports for now. We do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. You would also want to join us as we also march on the streets to bring you what the safe Ghana football demonstrators would be saying about Ghana's football. We'll also be sharing some of the content in their petition that will be presented to the president and also to a parliament. Uh, we understand the president is traveling out of the country later today. It's unclear if the petition would be presented to someone else to be submitted to him, but um, the um, safe kind of football demonstrators say that the petition is meant for the president. That is your sports for now. Head on to myjoyonline.com and read some more sports stories. We appreciate your time.